Dear friends, welcome to Know Thyself YouTube channel. Good morning. Hope you are all staying safe and keeping well. I sincerely thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel and follow the channel. If you find the contents of the videos uploaded in this channel useful, please subscribe to this channel and click the notification or the bell icon so that you can be notified when a video is uploaded. Kindly share the videos with others or on the internet. In this episode of Sunday Reflection segment, we present the homily for the third Sunday of Advent based on the liturgical readings of the A cycle. The readings of the third Sunday of Advent dwell on the theme, Patient and Joyful Waiting for Jesus. Bill, a young college student, was working as an intern at his college's Museum of Natural History. He was very depressed as things were not moving well in his life. As he sat at the cash register in the gift shop of the museum, he saw an elderly couple coming in with a little girl in the wheelchair. The girl was without hands and legs, which he lost in an accident. Feeling sympathy for her, Bill waved at her while receiving the money from her grandparents. The girl, though could not wave back to him, gave him a smile that came from a heart that is peaceful and joyful. Bill wondered how this girl, despite her handicap, could respond to his little gesture of concern with a smile that almost melted his heart. The girl's joyful attitude to life, despite her limitations, gave Bill completely a new sense of what life is all about. With her joyful smile, this handicapped girl took Bill from being dissatisfied with his life to her world of joy, smiles, love and warmth. On the third Sunday of Advent, the readings and the liturgy invite us to be joyful in the Lord as we wait for His coming, even if everything is not that wonderful in our lives. In the first reading, taken from the book of prophet Isaiah, the prophet reminds the exiled Israelites in Babylon that it was through their disloyalty to God that they had lost their liberty, had been taken as slaves to Babylon, and have been living there in servitude for nearly 60 years. However, he stirs up their depressed spirits and encourages them to rejoice and be cheerful because their God is coming to liberate them from slavery and lead them safely to their homeland. Prophet Isaiah promises that Yahweh would transform the wasteland of their exiled lives into a garden of Eden to facilitate their journey. The weak and the sick will be strengthened for the journey and they would be crowned with glory in their homeland. Thus, the prophet assures the exiles of a second exodus, more glorious than the first, and asks them to be cheerful and joyful as they patiently wait for their liberation. In the second reading, taken from the letter of St. James, St. James encourages persecuted Christians not to be fearful and frustrated. He asks them to believe in the presence and influence of the risen Jesus in their lives as Christians. Hence, they need to be cheerful and joyful as they wait for the second coming of Jesus. He reminds them of the need to be all the more determined in living their life as Christians by not neglecting their duties and by putting their conscience and their life in right with God as Jesus the eternal judge is standing at the gate. Finally, using the image of the farmer who patiently waits for the seeds he planted to sprout, St. James admonishes early Christians to wait patiently for the Lord's coming while dealing kindly with one another. In the first part of today's Gospel, Jesus clears the doubts of John the Baptist who was imprisoned by King Herod. Though John the Baptist knew Jesus 
was the Messiah. He wanted to confirm Jesus' identity as the Messiah for certain so that he could ask his inner circle of disciples to follow Jesus. To the emissaries sent by John, Jesus says that they must ask John the Baptist to rejoice on the fact that messianic prophecies of the prophets are fulfilled in Jesus, healing the sick, the blind, the lame, and the lepers, and the good news being preached to the people. In the second part of today's gospel, Jesus gives the highest compliments to the person of John the Baptist, particularly pointing out his courage and prophetic convictions. He also asks his listeners to rejoice in the greatness of John the Baptist, who heralded the arrival of Jesus the Messiah. On this third Sunday of Advent, the readings and the liturgy invite us, firstly, not to lose hope when we are challenged in our faith in God. John the Baptist, even after having direct experience of Jesus, the Messiah, has doubts about his identity as the Messiah. He clarifies his doubt by approaching Jesus through emissaries. Similarly, crisis situations that challenge our faith in God can happen in our life. It is important that we do not lose hope but stand firm and make every effort, like John the Baptist, to overcome the challenge to our faith. We must take the trouble to learn more about our faith. Pray to God constantly to deepen and strengthen our faith. And above all, seek God's assistance to live our faith, even in most difficult situations. Secondly, the liturgy today calls us to be joyful in our Christian living, particularly when life is hard going. The story of the handicapped girl and her attitude of joyfulness, despite her physical limitations, clearly show joyfulness does not consist in having everything in abundance. Joyfulness is an attitude of the heart that emerges from looking at what we have received in life rather than what we do not have. When we acknowledge what we have and be grateful to God and others, then we are joyful. When we have the positive attitudes of trust and confidence in God and others, we can truly be joyful. Finally, the liturgy today calls us to open ourselves to God and allow Him to transform our lives while patiently waiting for the transformation to take place in our lives. In the second reading, St. James compares the spiritual journey of a Christian to a farmer who sows the seed and patiently waits for the growth to take place until the harvest time. While doing our best for the growth of our spiritual lives, we must trust in God's grace and power to support our own personal efforts to become closer to God and to each other. Opening ourselves to God's grace blesses our own personal efforts to be God-like in our Christian lives. As we move into the third week of Advent, let us ask the Lord the grace to be hopeful when we are challenged in our faith, to live our Christian lives joyfully despite the troubles we face in our lives, and to open our lives to God's will and plan so that He may bless our own personal efforts to be God-like in our Christian lives. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. Stay blessed until we see you again with another video.